Seconds out, delighted to be joined by unbeaten featherweight Mick Conlon. How you doing? All good, Danny. How are you, mate? I'm good. Not not as good as you in sunny Epsom, about to tuck into some lovely food, I imagine. But yeah. although, how much are you allowed to eat? What's the what's the situation? I'm good. I'm very good. Um, my weight's fantastic. I can eat what I want really at the minute. Um, I'm very very close already. I'm I'm feeling good. I, I, I'm. You've probably seen recently there's talk again. I'm going back to 122, which is you know I could probably do 122 for this fight if I really wanted to. What um is the bakery habit eased off now? You're back in camp. It did. It lasted for um three weeks, and then uh, I says, "Nah, I can't keep doing this. If I do this, I will end up with a certain middleweight. So, you know, I can't. Uh, I can't be doing it." You said uh, the 122 pounds is an option once again. I know we talked about it before. You're in a very yeah. good position rankings wise at 126. What would be the thing yeah. you mind going down? Do you just think you might be more effective there? Well, if you think um, back before in the Keaton fight, I was talking about going to 122. Um, and then the Keaton fight stopped that because he wasn't going to fight at 122. So, you know, the fact that it, that was the only reason I kind of stopped. And I've always said, kind of pre pro, I want to be Ireland's first ever three weight world champion. And in my opinion, for me to be able to do that, it has to be 120, 122, 126, 130. You know, I, I don't feel I'm, I'm probably not big enough for um, 135. So, you know, uh, I definitely think that would be the three weeks I could do it in. And, and it's a, a 100% in the same goal in my mind. And I really want to do it. Does that mean when or if Carl Frampton still fights Jamel Herring, you'll be hoping Herring gets the job done so you can still make history? Listen, it doesn't matter who. Um, <laughs> I think by the time I'm at one thirty, none of those guys may be here. You know what I mean? Oh no, so, but I mean he could become the island's first three weight world champion first. Oh well, of course, is it? I'm happy. Listen, he's he's at the minute in my in my mind, he's Ireland's greatest ever fighter, and he set the bar and set the standard. I'm well a fighter to do so. So you know, if he went and done it, unbelievable. I'd be really really happy for him. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't hold any envy over that. That's that's an unbelievable achievement, and if he can do it, I'd be I'd be the latest. So do you? Think I mean, I'll just have to I'll just have to settle a second. Yeah. Do you think you'd be willing to give up the opportunity of a featherweight belt to go down and get the one twenty two belt first? Is that the way you see well, it? I think I think we've already got position now to be mandatory for the one twenty two title. Okay. So um, we spoke with Bob. Uh, Bob asked the question, can we still make it? And I've come out of lockdown in a better position mentally, physically, and weight ways than I ever went back in the training camp. So um, that why I say, that's why we say it's 100% it's an option. Um, we can do it. So he had a word with the WBO to say, we want to get me moved into the the 122 rankings. Um, I'm working the company. So he says, well, if he's number one on things, we're going to have to put him number one as mandatory for the winner of Fulton and Leo, I think. Yeah, because they're fighting soon for the, the vacant oh, belt. First, yeah, Saturday. So you're in a great position for a, potentially a vacant title shot of Feather, but now it's looking like a vacant title shot of 122. What, what do you make of those two guys that are fighting for the title? Have you seen much of them? Yeah, listen, I've seen, I remember the first time I actually seen Fulton um, was after the 2012 Olympics. I went over to, uh, it was like a, like a little party trip for me. I went over to Philadelphia with uh, Holy Family Boxing Club uh, from Belfast and I ended up fighting his teammate at 135 and I was only a 114 fighter at the time so wow. um, and I, I, if I'm honest I, I got a I got a bad decision in there but I didn't care because I was just there to have a party and get drunk um, but I seen him then and he fought some kid there and I was I wasn't I wasn't too impressed. There was a lot of a lot of talk about him, but I wasn't too impressed. And I've seen him as a pro, and he's beat a lot of undefeated fighters. So, got to give him his credit, and I do rate him. Um, I haven't seen as much of Leo. Um, if I'm honest, I haven't seen any of Leo, but I've heard a lot about him, and I heard he's a good fighter. So, I'll be interested in Saturday when it, when when they fight. I'll tune in Sunday morning and uh, have a watch. Will you be? Sounds busy over there. Will, will you be um, dropping down in weight during camps going forward from now to try and see how your body adapts to a lighter weight when you're sparring and stuff? Yeah, definitely. Listen, I, I, I'm later now sparring than what I've ever been, and I'm feeling great. I feel physically, 
I, I actually am in terms of my S and C stats and stuff. I'm stronger than I've been. Um, I'm I, I'm fitter than I've ever been at the minute. So I'm expecting something really big on on August fifteenth. Well, I'm I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about fighting in front of no fans. That's something different, and that's something I feel that hearing those studs and hearing that breathing and, and the wincing is is it has really put a little spark in me and a little further. So um, I, I'm interested to see what's going to be like. I, I think I could make 122 right now if I really wanted to, but you know this fight was set at 126. Uh, to cook this 126 is a 126 fighter, so it can't really change at night. And you mentioned to coach, obviously, a, a good test, former European champion. Yeah. But a lot of people, UK-wise, certainly will remember him from um, getting blasted out by Josh Warrington yeah. around a yeah. year ago. Does that put you, in a sense, in a no-win situation, in that if you blast him out early, it's the same yeah. if you don't, you know? Yeah, listen, I think so. Um, it kind of does. But at the same time, that's not the, the push I'm expecting, uh, expecting. And that was a Josh Warrington who whose confidence is sky high being a world champion. You know, when you become a world champion, I think your level raises. And you can see that with Josh Warrington um, from the front of the fight on. And his level has, has went up. So I'm expecting a hard fight. Takush, his only other two defeats have been a split decision and a majority decision. So he's no he's no pushover. Um, Warrington done the job on him. Can you see me still? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Got, got, a, phone call, got a phone call there. Um, Warrington done the job on him, but you know I think I'll go in there and do the job. I don't. I'm not. I'm not expecting to go in there and blast him out in three rounds. Um, I, I, I expect to take him out, and I'm going to take him out. But at the same time, I I, I don't want to rush my work and do something that isn't natural to my stay. Assuming all goes well against the coach, do you expect that 122 pound title shot to come before the end of this year, or is it more likely to be 2021? I, I'll have it next. I'll have it next if, it, if if it's possible. I'll have it next, 100. percent I don't. I know I don't need to test myself and see how I'm feeling during that weight because I've done all the stats and we've done all the tests and we've done the tests when I used to sit much heavier than what I have been sitting since I've come out of lockdown and it was really achievable to make it then, but. It's going to be even more achievable now. So I think it's just something that has kind of it's a little spark me again. The, the talk of this being a three world champion, and listen, people talk on Twitter and say shit, whatever they want to say, but I've always said I'll be a three world champion, and I do believe I'll achieve that. Yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest thing standing in your way at the moment would be the travel restrictions getting over to the US, because presumably that's yeah. where the fight would be, or, or is there a chance it would be in Ireland? I don't know. Um, they'll be the champion, so they'll probably have the kind of say where it'll be, or whether or not the ESPN money can can, can sway it to be somewhere else. Um, but if it's in if it's in America, Vegas or New York, happy happy days. I mean, it does, it's, it's no problem. Um, I know they're both with Showtime, kind of. So you know that could be a possibility for a, a Fury Whaler undercard. Well, you put it out there now. Is it speak speak it into? Um Speaking in the existence. That's yep, it. 100%. Um, what's the mood like in the gym at the moment? Because I'm guessing there's some of you that have got dates already in the diary. Some of yeah. you are still waiting to find out. Is everyone kind of pushing each other on as usual? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, you know, we've got Abbas a Baru, who you've been speaking to a few times I've seen. He's in the gym and, and he's a great guy. Well, he's quite really a Jack Cole guy, isn't he? Uh, he's, a, he's a hard trainer, a hard guy. But also a really funny young uh, Unassuming kind of guy too, um, who I like to be around, and then obviously my, my teammate who's sitting here having lunch with me, Harden Eubank. Um, Josh isn't in yet, but he's coming in soon. So um, Harden, me and Harden, we bounce off each other, push each other every single day. So the energy in the gym has been great. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not lying; it's probably the, one of the best camps I've had, just of the enjoyment, the mood, and then obviously because I'm having no problems making weight, it makes it so much easier. What happened to the plan of you and Josh um, taking a flat together? Is that still happening? Because obviously lockdown came It's still in. happening. Lockdown kind of put a stop to it, didn't it, at the minute. So I win these back down before we get things sorted. But, you know, hopefully hopefully by next camp we'll be in, we'll be in the flat together. And, you know, Josh, as usual, will probably be up to the cocaine and the hookers. You never know. But <laughs> Last time you, know, you said this, want... you told me to take it out. And then you told me to put it back in. So I just want to make sure I you know, know what you're saying. <laughs> Josh loves it. He's okay. Don't worry about him. And you've got have you got the same number of kids now? Not not as you I still had have before as Josh. I mean, 
Yes, no, George has two now. George has two now. So um, I think he's. I think he's getting it rough. He's, he's always ringing me. Oh, the kids are doing this. I can't sleep. So he's a stress so. head, though, isn't he? He's a big warrior. He does. He always worries. He always worries. You need to give him some fatherly advice, like literally, to, uh, parenting <laughs> advice. I'll, I'll give him parenting advice right now. Fuck off and do a training camp somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go home for long periods. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, well, it's been great to catch up with you. Um, I look forward to seeing that. you in the gym sometime soon when, when everything's yes, definitely, back definitely. To yes, yeah. see you down there with your face mask and all on. Search your gloves. Look even more like a serial killer than I already do, yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just wait. don't bring that down the next time. Hannibal Flexer. <laughs> yeah. No worries. Good right, stuff, mate. All right, I'll see you soon and um, best of luck yes, with the cooch and the preparations. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All the best.